The mental checklist. So what is it? The mental checklist is basically things that you're thinking about constantly as the game goes on. If you're in lane phase, you're thinking, can I walk up for this minion? Where's the enemy jungler? Can I trade with my opponent? Should I stay back? What should my lane state be? Uh, what are my opponent's cooldowns? What are my teammates' cooldowns? Those are all the little things that a good player is constantly thinking about because it's not just like, you know, going into game and like turning your brain off, right? I mean, maybe <laughs> maybe some of you are, but a, a good player is constantly thinking about all these different variables that are going on in the game. When you are in game, whether you are consciously or subconsciously thinking about it, these are the things that you're attempting to do. Like when you walk up for a CS, you're trying to last hit and you're thinking about whether your opponent's going to let you get that last hit if you're going to trade with him, if you're going to ignore the last hit to try and harass your opponent, stuff like that. The thing you also have to think about, though, is there's a thing called the mental stack. There's, there's a limited number of things you can actually think about in any given moment, and that leaves room for errors in other aspects of your gameplay. So, for example, you might be thinking about dodging a skill shot from your opponent, so you're hyper-focused on, like, let's say a brand, right? You're trying to avoid the brand WQ combo, but you're focusing so hard on the brand, you're, like, constantly looking at him, that you miss the enemy jungler that's just straight up walking through a ward into your lane and ganking you. I see it all the time. It certainly happened to me. I'm sure it's happened to you guys plenty of times where you're like, where did that guy come from? You check the replay and he's like, oh, he just walked straight through lane. <laughs> There's different tiers of the mental checklist as well. A lower level player might be only thinking one or two things, right? Because most people can't focus on more than a few things at a time. So for this example, let's say you're like a low elo player. You're basically only focused on, can I last hit a minion? And should I attack my lane opponent? You're not thinking about roaming. You're not thinking about the wave state. You're not thinking about junglers. Like where did the jungler path? What, what jungler is even in the game? Like I swear when I coach people, they actually just don't even see this kind of thing. Sometimes it's why low elo gets stomped by Shaco, Fiddlesticks, Evelyn, all these champions that you have to be pretty hyper aware that they exist or like mid laners that roam really hard. I see Kiana's get away with way more than they should because people just aren't thinking about when the mid laner is leaving. And it's hard. Don't get me wrong. It's hard to think about that thing, right? But this is how you improve at the game. So once a player becomes competent at understanding general fundamentals, they can start to focus more on jungle tracking and trading properly. You start thinking about where's the enemy jungler? Where's my jungler? Like if my jungler is on the bottom side of the map, well, if he's making a play down there and you don't see the enemy jungler for like 10 to 15 seconds, you might start to think, well, maybe he's top because otherwise he should have responded to the play bottom, right? Middle of the pack players around platinum will usually understand what they need to do right, but they'll often forget about things like summoner spells or lose track of important cooldowns like ultimates. Um, so like I've seen people get into fights and then they back or they die or whatever, and then they come back to lane and like about three minutes later, they get into another fight and they're like, oh, pff, I didn't even know that guy still had ignite. I thought he used it in the last fight. But we you don't realize is that you spent 30 seconds being dead, 30 seconds walking back to lane, and then 30 seconds back in lane. The ignite's already back up in like another 30 seconds, bro. The more you play, the more you get these fundamentals down. There's a way to get good at this game to where you are constantly improving your autopilot. And your autopilot is basically like you don't even have to think about what you're doing because you already know. So at high elo, people become very aware of the small details. Like now people start thinking about the, the jungler matchups or if you saw someone during like a, let's say you saw a jungler go by a ward at their raptors and you saw the way that he passed, like he passed uh, like into his red area. Then you know that he, if he's blue side, then he's bottom. He's not going top yet. So now you can like think about your bottom lane should be aware that the jungler's bot side. The top laner can play a little more aggressive because you know that the jungler is not going to be on you for the next like 20 seconds. And a lot of these things, low elo players don't even think about this. You know, it's uh, if you guys have ever played Starcraft uh, and I know Noldar has, I've, I've seen you uh, talk about it. Whenever you're doing like drone scouting at the beginning of the game, sometimes you'll know that a cheese is coming just based on the way that the drone came into your base. Like if they path at a weird angle, then you know that they're trying to cheese you, right? So then you start scouting for that. Yep, exactly. So once you get your autopilot to, to be at that like high level, you don't have to focus your mental stacks on like trying to last hit a minion, you know? You don't have to think about that because you know what you should be doing. You don't have to think about how you should be managing the wave or can I freeze here? Can I not freeze here? Can I slow push? Can I hard push? Because you already know 
what's possible given the current game state because you've been in that situation hundreds of times. Keep in mind, everything is practice, right? You don't become better at these things overnight. It takes a very long time to level up your game to get to the higher ranks. Uh, when I came back to the game in season 10, I had a very specific goal in mind in order to get better because I had already played this game, you know, years ago. I stopped playing in season five and came back five years later and I understood the game a little bit, but the game's changed so much since then that I had to focus on like small things in order to improve my overall game. So the first thing I did was I picked two to three champions to focus on. So I only had to practice mechanics on like this small pool of champions. Uh, and then some of those champions aren't even hard to play, like Renekton, Maokai. They're not that difficult. Um, I spammed hundreds of games on Camille in order to actually be good with her. Let me tell you the first like 50, 60 games I played on Camille, I fed so hard. I fed unbelievably hard. But the thing is, sometimes you got to do that in order to learn the lesson, like, right? Sometimes you have to do that in order to get good. It's okay to make mistakes as long as you're learning from them. And then once I understood the mechanics of the champions that I was playing, then I started focusing on wave management and macro uh, because the game had changed so much since season five. I didn't even know things about wave management in season five the way that I do right now. And that's because, well, first off, there's plenty of content out there that you can kind of just like see. Um, you can see other people like explain wave management, how to freeze, how to slow push, fast push, all that. There's a lot of content content out there for the game that back then it didn't exist. Um, and then once I got good at understanding general wave management things, uh, then I just focused on teleport because teleport was not common back in season five. Like it just started becoming popular right when I stopped playing. But before that, people would just take Ignite. You just wanted to kill your lane opponent uh, in the top lane specifically. So then I started focusing on how do I how do I use teleport to impact the other side of the map? So now in my brain, while I'm laning, because I already have the wave management covered, I've got like the mechanics covered, I don't have to think about how I'm gonna land a hookshot cue because I know how to do it. It's just autopilot. So now I can start focusing on, should I be teleporting bottom? Should I be teleporting to dragon? Should I split push? Should I uh, team fight? I already put my autopilot game to the level where I, I didn't have to think about those kinds of things anymore. Um, and yeah. That's pretty much it. Just remember, it takes time to get good at these things. Don't be discouraged if you're struggling. Like, you spend 200, 300 games in the same elo. As long as you're learning step by step, eventually you will climb. I promise you. Uh, that's about all I had. Do you guys have any questions? I have one question. How do you deal with burnout when spamming all your games? I mean, if the game isn't fun for you, just take a break. You're not in any rush. Nobody is demanding that you need to be a certain elo by next month, otherwise you uh, can't pay rent. You kind of just take it one game at a time, right? Any advice on if you should focus on meta champs when trying to climb? I don't think you need to bother with meta champs. I mean, if you like the champs that are meta, then go for it, just play them. However, if you are... If you don't find the meta champs fun to play, just don't bother. Like, until you are very, very, very high elo, and I'm talking, like, top 100 of challenger level, I don't think meta champions really matter. Unless you are specifically trying to get into the pro scene, it doesn't matter if you play a meta champion or not. As long as you understand what your champion is good at and what your champion is bad at, you should be able to make the decisions by yourself in game to deal with any of the like consequences of picking said champion. Do you think we should play ranked all the time to practice and never use draft? Um, I mean, I practice on draft all the time. I put probably, I probably put a thousand maybe 2,000 games into normal drafts uh, during the past season, while also putting about 1,000 games into rank between my two accounts. Do you have a list of what to work on in terms of getting into autopilot mo mode? That's a good question. So the things that you should be able to autopilot without thinking about at all is mechanics. For example, if you're playing GP, practice barrels, just nonstop practice barrels all day, every day. Well, not all day, every day, but like, you know what I mean? As much as you can without getting completely bored out of your mind and just like losing focus. mechanics should always be basically autopiloted. I'm going to be real with you guys. Mechanics in this game are not challenging. <laughs> they just aren't. Play Super Smash Bros. Melee, play Starcraft, play Quake. This game's like a baby game compared to those games. Yeah, absolutely. You should be uh, practicing axes. What you should also be doing is practicing uh, CSing while also not dropping axes because that's like the hard part of laning with Draven. So going back to the previous question, um, autopilot mechanics, you really should be able to autopilot wave management. Like you should already know whether 
whether you should slow push, fast push, or freeze, or even out the wave, like you should know those things ahead of time as soon as you're available to make any of those decisions. So mechanics, wave management, being able to see us just in general, that should be autopilot. Understanding power spikes is something that you should have on autopilot. Like knowing that if you are, let's see, what's a good example? If you're like Blade of the Rune King Aurelia versus a, a Camille with like a Sheen and a Phage and like a Ruby Crystal, you should know that you just straight up win that in a 1v1. If you land all of your abilities without her mechanically outplaying you, you just straight up win that. So because of that, you should be able to like immediately know your wave management situation like should you slow push because you have the power to just stop her from stopping you from slow pushing right so then that allows you to maybe get an objective like rift herald or dragon yeah runes should also be autopilot although that's that's really more of an out of game thing that's not something you really have to think about too much in game checking things like objective timers and summoner spells and timing summoner spells that should all be autopilot as well and i am working on a video to learn how to time summoner spells and like you would think it's it's uh it's not that it's hard it's that it's weird because there's different timings based on what they took like if they took cosmic insight and cooldown boots that changes summoner spell timings and then also teleport is a different summoner spell timing for every level but that should all be auto pilot as well so mechanics summoner spells wave management power spikes those those should all be autopilot things that you don't have to really think about and just constantly checking the scoreboard guys there's a reason why i constantly spam my scoreboard it's not just to look at the cs it's because i'm trying to look at who bought what what's the next objective timer wins are you know dragon baron rift herald elder uh even stuff like red buff and blue buff like if i manage to take the enemy red buff while they weren't looking then i'm gonna time it and try and take it again on the next spawn if there's no other questions thank you guys and i'll see you in the youtube comments